Lilith demands surrender, nothing less. You have to surrender to Lilith. Today I'm here to talk about Lilith, the mother of all beasts, the beasts of all beasts. And today's video is going to be on Lilith in Scorpio. Hi everyone. Today I wanted to talk about Lilith in Scorpio. Um, Lilith is all about the dark feminine. So that means anything that is hidden and suppressed in the feminine is the domain of Lilith. So it can be anything to do with abuse of the feminine, um, child, child rearing, you know, so it's, it's also the dark side of the mother. So the way we raise our children and the dark side of that, how that manifests. Lilith is all about the dark side of the feminine. It is to do with um, sensuality. It is to do with the dark side. So it also refers to abuse of the feminine. It represents child abuse. It represents child killing. It represents uh, the dark side of motherhood. So if the moon is about motherhood, Lilith is about the dark side of motherhood. Uh, Lilith and Kali are very, very, very similar energies. Both represent the dark feminine. Both are destructive in nature, but that destruction leads to something positive. Um, they are both represented of the dark night of the soul, what is called in modern terms, the dark night of the soul. So both of them are represented of this journey and the end of this journey is what brings light. So it brings light at the end of this journey. So when we say Kali and when we say Lilith, these are dark feminine goddesses. These are very, very, very ancient energies. So when you have Lilith in Scorpio in your natal chart, you will be bound to feel this energy. There is no doubt about it that you will feel this energy in your own aura, in your own energy field, at the base of your spine, at your root chakra. That is the potency of this energy. Lilith in Scorpio is the root chakra energy. It is to do with your Kundalini energy, also called the serpent energy, which when awakened, it rushes through all your seven chakras and reaches right up to the crown chakra. And you basically reach Godhead. You as a human being are able to realize your maximum potential while living in this physical body. So when you have that kind of positive energy, powerful energy at the base of your spine, that is Lilith and Scorpio. Lilith and Scorpio is known to be at home um, because Scorpio is to do with the eighth house. It's to do with death, transformation, uh, death and rebirth. So it's pretty much like a snake shedding its skin, you know, death and rebirth. Uh, old skin is shed, new skin is born. That is the eighth house energy. And when you have Lilith in Scorpio, Lilith is also representative of this kind of energy. Like I said before, Lilith and Kali are goddesses that represent this dark journey of the soul. Uh, what we call, you know, hell. Hell is nothing but facing your own demons. And when you, when you face your own demons, when you work on your own shadow side, that's when the light uh, comes to you. That's when you are awakened, spiritually awakened. So what does it mean when you have Lilith and Scorpio? So Lilith, like I said before, is the dark side of the feminine. It can be to do with child abuse. It is to do with abuse of the feminine. Um, so, you know, a lot of people who have Lilith and Scorpio in their natal chart, they might have faced abuse in some form or the other as a child. Or they might have faced some kind of violation, which distorted this energy into something else. So what I mean by that is they must, they might have faced some kind of abuse when they were at an age where they were vulnerable. 
and this violation, this abuse turned into something else inside them and they carry this wound with them uh, throughout life. Now, how they use this energy is completely up to them. Uh, but the energy itself is, is destructive. It is malicious. It is very, very uh, powerful. It is magnetizing. So people with Lilith and Scorpio, they have a kind of sensuality which is very, very difficult to explain. This is not the kind of open sensuality like a Leo, which is obvious, which is all about your outward appearance, the way you dress, the way you groom, that kind of sensuality. Lilith and Scorpio is not about that kind of sensuality. It is something very dark. It is something very primal. It is very, very ancient. So when I say that, I mean uh, they have this magnetizing pull and you will get pulled into their aura without realizing why. You will not be able to explain it. It's like this draw that they have. And because that draw is coming from the base of the root chakra, it is extremely magnetizing. I like to think we are all energy beings in a physical human flesh body. So when you look at Lilith and Scorpio, this is a kind of magnetizing energy that they send out into the world. Not to everybody, but to whoever they wish to attract. And when you're in their energy field, when you're in the energy field of a Lilith and Scorpio, you are going to feel that pull. You are going to feel that magnetic attraction. It's not even an attraction because attraction is too superficial a word. You're going to feel this draw. It's like a current. It's like a magnetic current and it is going to pull you in. And you won't know why, but you will feel this and you will get obsessed with them and you will wonder why this is happening to you and you will want to know more about them. It is kind of like, um, so Kali and Lilith are often depicted in mythology as being these bloodthirsty goddesses. If you look at Kali, she has a garland of skulls around her neck and she is known to slay demons. Uh, she is known to bring the light. It's the same with Lilith. Lilith and Kali are both sort of demon energies. They are dark energies. So they are very, very uh, comfortable with the dark. They are not scared of the dark. So a Lilith and Scorpio person, if you have Lilith and Scorpio, you are going to feel this energy inside you. It's going to be like this base primal instinct that you feel. But if you don't know, if you're not aware of it, uh, you it will be dormant inside you, but you will always feel this energy. You will feel that something is inside you, but you don't know what it is. And you will want it to come out, but you don't know how to channel it. And that can cause a lot of pent up issues. So uh, when I say bloodthirsty, it's also a reference to uh, vampiric tendencies. So like I said before, Lilith can also signify child abuse, uh, abuse, uh, you know, when your uh, boundaries were violated as a child. And it's to do with abuse of the feminine. So we're talking about rape, we're talking about incest, we're talking about all these issues which uh, violate uh, the feminine principle. So, you know, Lilith and Scorpio is going to carry this wound. It may not be a wound that they experienced in this life. It could be a wound some, that, you know, they are carrying forward from their earlier generations. So maybe somebody in their uh, maternal side of the family faced this kind of a trauma and this is being carried forward across generations. So this person with Lilith and Scorpio is going to carry this trauma inside them. And because they carry this trauma, their energy field is also uh, targeted with this trauma. So they tend to attract people who will, um, you know, try and increase this trauma for them. So what happens is they may attract people who are abusive or they might themselves be abusive towards others. So when I say bloodthirsty and when I say vampiric, this is what I mean. So Kali and Lilith are both uh, destructive energies. They can uh, destroy or they can heal. It all depends on how they use this energy. 
So let's say somebody with Lilith and Scorpio gets into a relationship with somebody else. They can use their intense sensuality and power to destroy the other person, which is very similar to a vampire, which is very similar to a black widow spider or a praying mantis. These are negative feminine energies. And there is actually in spirituality, there is nothing like negative and positive. It's uh, two sides of the same coin where there's dark, there's light as above, so below, you know, so yin, yang. So it's all together. It, it has to coexist. You cannot have dark without light. You cannot have light without dark. You cannot have feminine without masculine. They both exist, coexist together. It's required for having balance in this universe. So when I say this, that they can, if they get into a relationship with somebody, they can abuse the other person very badly. And this is because a Lilith and Scorpio instinctively knows uh, what are the weak points in the other person. So what I mean by that is, this is a very instinctive knowing. They don't really have to ask you questions to find out what you're all about. They can look at you, they can look at your energy field or they can look into your eyes and they will be able to gather where your traumas lie. So they will know instinctively whether you were abused as a child, uh, you know, do you have some insecurities about you? Uh, are you repressing some memories from your past? These are the kind of things that Lilith and Scorpio will know instinctively. They don't have to try, they don't have to ask you questions, they will just gather this information. It is kind of like a, an aura reading, an energy reading that they have. And so when a Lilith and Scorpio gets into a relationship with another person, they can use these insecurities of the other person to fulfill their own needs. So what do they mean when they say a praying mantis, you know, bites off the head of the other person after mating with them? Or, you know, a similar thing with the black widow spider where she kills her mate after she has, uh, you know, done the deed. It basically means, you know, uh, using somebody else for their own personal gain and then destroying them after that, right? That's what it basically means. So a Lilith and Scorpio, when she gets into a relationship with somebody else, it can be like she might have vampiric tendencies, where, like a succubus almost, where she just keeps taking, taking, taking from the other person and never really never really giving anything back in the relationship and she keeps taking and once her own needs are fulfilled she completely tosses the other person aside or she leaves them or destroys them and that is a vampiric parasitic kind of mentality which is uh, the negative manifestation of this energy people who have evolved who have worked past their own issues because usually people who do this kind of negative uh, you know work in relationships, they are the type of people who haven't worked on their own traumas. They're, they are the people who have not worked on their past traumas, their own abuse issues, their own shadow side. They have not, uh, you know, faced their own shadow side. And so they take it out on their partner. And that's why relationships get destroyed. That's why they destroy their partner. That's why they're called black widow spiders or praying mantises or, you know, that, that archetype of being the destroying female energy. But then people who have worked on their shadow side, people who have worked past their own trauma, when they get into a when they get into a relationship with another person as a Lilith and Scorpio, they will be able to, uh, of course, know the other person's insecurities. But rather than using it for their own personal gain, they will now try and find ways to help to heal the other person because a Lilith and Scorpio has done the healing on their own selves. So they know what it is like to go through this kind of abuse, this kind of past trauma. They know what it is like to heal themselves. And so now they are ready to offer it up to their partner. They're ready to heal their own partner. And they can make excellent healers because Lilith, like I said, it's a very ancient energy. It is a very, very, very ancient energy. I personally worship Lilith and I worship Kali. So I'm very close to this energy. I have Lilith and Scorpio myself. Um, but rather than using it for negative purposes, I have worked on my shadow side and now I use it for healing other people, which is what I do through astrology as well. So uh, moving back to Lilith, uh, it's a very, very ancient energy. Uh, energy. 
Uh, Lilith is a very ancient goddess. Uh, she is represent. She is flanked by owls on her two sides. Owls are creatures of the night, again signifying darkness. So Lilith is all about facing our own dark side, facing our own demons, and working through our own issues. Uh, until you face the dark, you cannot reach the light, and uh, that's how uh, Lilith functions. Until you face your own dark issues to do with femininity, the way you see yourself as a woman, if this is a woman who has Lilith in Scorpio, the way she views herself as a woman, her own sensuality, how she relates to other people in the world, what her rights are as a woman, how she uh, realizes her own feminine power. Because a lot of the times what can happen is if a woman uh, with Lilith in Scorpio has gone through abuse, she can be very fearful and she uh, she may think of all femininity as being disgusting you know because she has been violated in some way and so she thinks that anything to do with femininity is bad so she may try to be you know overly masculine or she may try to completely repress her feminine side rather than embracing it that because she herself is a woman so rather than embracing her feminine side she may actually completely suppress it completely uh, you know uh, cut off her relationship with the, her own femininity. So that is a very, very uh, extreme side of Lilith in Scorpio where she has basically shunned, she's basically put a lid on her own abuse. She's not ready to face it at all. She doesn't want to confront it and she just wants to escape from it. That is not healthy, of course, and it also causes a lot of problems if she gets into relationships in the future. Because then what will happen is because she's all about masculinity and she's all about suppressing her own feminine energy, she is going to be all about controlling the partner, you know, trying to make them do as her will. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Lilith demands surrender, nothing less. But what, what do I mean by surrender? You can surrender to her energy and then come out through the other side, you know. So you can go through the dark shadows, you can really reach the depths of hell and then come out on the other side. That is what I meant when I said Lilith demands surrender. Because until you surrender, you don't face it. Until you face it, you don't really come out of it and realize what it is to be free. Another example of uh, where Lilith, Lilith can be used to heal, like I said, it can be both vampire energy, it can be healing energy. So Lilith in Scorpio, is if it is used for healing purposes, it is kind of like the sacred priestesses of ancient times who would use their sensuality to heal people. So that is the positive manifestation of Lilith in Scorpio energy. So rather than destroying the people around her, she is actually using this energy to um, heal the other person and to uh, help them overcome their own traumas, their own issues around sensuality, their own issues around how they view the feminine. So Lilith is not just to do with women. It is closer to women because it is a feminine energy, just like the moon. But in a man's chart, Lilith represents the kind of woman he is afraid of. So if a man has Lilith in Scorpio, he is going to be... Uh, he is probably going to be scared of women who dabble in the occult or the dark arts or astrology or anything that is hidden. So these are the kind of men who will scoff at the idea like, you know, a woman can be interested in these things. And they will openly ridicule, but at, in secret, they may be drawn to these kind of women. It's kind of like... Uh, uh, this pull that they have where they need to find out more. Th these kind of women int intrigue uh, the man with Lilith and Scorpio because he's trying to figure out his own dark feminine side. So in a man's chart, Lilith would represent um, his own mother issues, like the dark issues to do with his own mother. So if his mother was very controlling, then this is going to play out in his own relationships, romantic relationships with other women. Or let's say... Um, if he had an abusive childhood where he was exposed to a lot of sensuality at a very young age, he is going to feel violated because um, it is a violation of his own boundaries. So then he's going to grow up and if he's, if he's repressed this energy, which is what Lilith is about, it's about dark energy. So it's energy that's been kept repressed. So if this man has kept his energy repressed and he's not really understood it or worked on it or realized how he relates to other women in his life, 
he's going to get into abusive relationships where he is the abuser, where he controls the woman, where he tries to dominate her, where he tries to repress her, where he tries to basically take from her rather than it being a healthy balance of masculine and feminine. Um, there are two examples, like it's a little difficult to understand Lilith, especially Lilith and Scorpio, because it is a very, um, it's a very primal energy. You feel it at the base of your spine. It is very, very powerful. So people who have this energy will relate to what I'm talking about. If you have this in your natal chart and in, in my video, I'm talking only about the black moon Lilith, because I believe that is the most, uh, accurate representation of Lilith energy. So if you have the black moon Lilith in your natal chart, you know what I'm talking about. This is, you feel this at a visceral level. You feel this energy in your aura, in your own body, at the base of your spine, you feel this energy. So there is no running away from it. You know, it's, it's always there. It's always there. And, uh, uh, you know, it's like, for people who don't understand this energy, I'd like to give some examples of, you know, by referencing movies and uh, the arts. So uh, there used to be a character in Jewish mythology. She was called Salome, S-A-L-O-M-E. And um, I, I don't know the full mythology, but I have read about her. And I believe that this is very accurate representation of Lilith, especially Lilith and Scorpio. So uh, Salom, I'm going to read out from here. So excuse me if I'm looking down. So Salom, according to the Jewish historian Josephus, she was the daughter of Herodias and the stepdaughter of Herod Antipas. Uh, this is a region in Palestine. And in biblical literature, she is remembered as the immediate agent in the execution of John the Baptist. So uh, she was twice married, first to Philip, the half, half brother of her father, Herod, and a son of Herod, first the great. And then she was married again to Aristobulus, who was the son of Herod of Chalcis. So what happened was uh, Herod Antipas, who was uh, her stepfather, Herod Antipas was uh, Salom's stepfather, what he did was he basically imprisoned John the Baptist because John the Baptist condemned his marriage to Herodias. Herodias is Salome's mother. So basically Salome's stepdad imprisoned John the Baptist because John the Baptist was against her stepdad's marriage to her own mother. But the, the interesting part is Herod, basically Salome's stepdad, he was afraid to get John the Baptist killed by himself. So he wanted help. So what he did was he called upon Salome to help him do the deed. So he asked Salome to uh, basically dance in the courthouse. And this is very, very popularly represented in art and literature. If you look up uh, paintings on Salome's dance, you will see pictures of Salome dancing in the courthouse. It's a very, very sensual dance. It's a very slow dance. It is meant to seduce. It's meant to lure the other person in. So she did the dance. She did this dance in the court. And after that, uh, Herod, her dad, her stepdad, asked her what she wanted in return. And she had only one answer. I want St. John Baptist's head on a plateau. She basically wanted the guy beheaded. And why, want she, why did she want that? Because she wanted to avenge her own mother. Uh, her own mother was Herodias. Her own mother was really, really angry that John the Baptist was against her marriage. Because again, this is Lilith. Lilith is telling them like, who, who the hell are you to dictate who I'm supposed to marry and who I'm supposed to be with? So her mother was very, very upset. And Salome, to avenge her own mother, she asked for John the Baptist's head on a platter. And there is also a story that goes that Salome was actually, uh, she liked John the Baptist. So it's, it's a, it is, it is a twisted energy. So it's all about love, revenge, and hate as well. So Salome desired John the Baptist, but she also wanted uh, him killed. And so she got him beheaded. She took his head on a platter. And there are stories that she 
actually uh, beheaded him herself. So after she beheaded him, there are pictures of her kissing John the Baptist after having his head on the platter. So that's how insidious this kind of energy is, you know. So Lilith loves extremely strongly. You know, Lilith is not about casual love. It is not about casual sensuality or casual relationships. It goes to the very root chakra. So the root chakra is your foundation, you know, all your insecurities, all your fears in life. Everything that you fear in this life is contained in your root chakra. So imagine if that is the kind of relationship that you're getting into. That kind of relationship is going to bring out all your worst fears in life. But it is also going to heal them because it's going to help you face those fears. So Lilith loves very, very intensely, but she also hates very intensely. And so this is the kind of example I wanted to give to illustrate the kind of energy Lilith is, really is, especially Lilith and Scorpio. As an example, I also wanted to give another uh, couple of examples. So if you watch the movie uh, Dracula by Bram Stoker, and I know I referenced this earlier as well in my original Venus and Scorpio video. This is uh, a favorite movie of mine. And in this movie, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, Monica Bellucci plays a character where she is a vampire. And, um, you know, if you look at Lilith, if, if you see Monica Bellucci's character in that movie, she would probably be an underling of Lilith. So if she's the underling and she herself is so powerful, imagine how powerful Lilith is. That is Lilith energy. So she is extremely seductive, extremely potent, extremely volatile. She can destroy anytime she wants. She doesn't have to think much or do anything. She can just destroy at her will. That is the kind of energy that Lilith and Scorpio is. So um, there is another play, uh, it's called Medea, M-E-D-E-A, and it's a play by Lars von Trier. He's one of my favorite directors. And this play, um, it shows Lilith energy, Lilith and Scorpio energy perfectly. So Medea, it's kind of a play on Medusa, sort of. So Medea is also an asteroid that is to do with, again, the feminine principle, dark feminine principle. So here uh, it shows how Lilith can really love. She loves to no ends. Like she, she can give up everything for love, everything. But if you cross her, her hate is stronger than love. So that is what Lilith and Scorpio is. You know, she loves like no one else but she also hates like no one else. So this is why I say that messing around with a Lilith and Scorpio, you know, somebody who has Lilith and Scorpio in their chart is a bad idea all around. You should stay away from doing that. And I say this because most people with Lilith and Scorpio, especially if they have their South Node in the eighth house, because South Node is also past life energy. So, and the eighth house is all about occult, taboo, the dark arts, you know, anything that's hidden. Um, so Lilith and Scorpio people, they can really prey on other people's insecurities. And they know a lot about the dark arts. They know about, know about voodoo. They know about dark spells. They know about occult. They just know these things like they wouldn't have studied it, but they know, you know, which which spices are used for which spells. They have these instinctive understandings. Nobody's taught them these things. They've not gone online and looked it up and said, okay, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> some seeds are used for prosperity and something is used for destruction. They just know these things. So it's very easy for a Lilith and Scorpio to, to destroy you. If you get on their bad side, uh, you know, they can use love spells to really torture you. They can use black magic to get you under their spell where you are doing their bidding, but they don't have to do a thing where they are not attached to you, but you are completely obsessed with them. 
It's very, very, very easy for Lilith and Scorpio people to do this with another person. So that's why I say that, you know, you should not get on their bad side because it's a very, very bad idea to do that. It, uh, and the, the interesting part is when this Lilith and Scorpio side of the person is activated, uh, like, you know, the revenge side of it, if, they, if you've gotten on their bad side and they want to take revenge on you. Uh, unlike a lot of signs that have uh, a conscience or like, you know, they have some ethical boundaries when they're taking this kind of revenge, they have a limit. A Lilith and Scorpio will most likely not have a boundary uh, if you have gotten to that point where you have betrayed her. If you've gotten on her bad side, then it doesn't take much for her to unleash damage on the other person and she won't have to feel bad about it. She doesn't feel bad about it because in her mind, this vengeance is actually justified. So that's why I say that don't mess around with the, uh, with the Lilith and Scorpio because these people, um, they use a lot of hidden things to take revenge. It's not even things that you are aware of and uh, you will find the repercussions in your life uh, without realizing it. Uh, I know that I talked about the serpent earlier and when I say serpent, it's a reference to Kundalini, the base energy, you know, at the base of our spine, which when awakened, it leads us to uh, become a personal God. We can reach Godhead. So when I say that, you know, serpent, um, a, a Lilith in Scorpio is kind of like the serpent where she asks you to trust in her. You feel like you can trust her. That's how Lilith in Scorpio is. It's a very, it's a very um, hidden energy. That's why it's called occult. Occult is anything hidden. It's not like what people call it, like, you know, something taboo and dark. It can be, but Occult is anything that is hidden, anything that has not been faced, anything that has not been realized, that is in the subconscious, that is what occult is. So if 8th house is all about suppression, 12th house is about repression. Suppression is a conscious act, repression is an unconscious act, where you're not aware, of, aware that you're doing it. I know I digress a lot and I know that this video is getting to be really long, but I really wanted to talk about all the facets of Lilith and Scorpio so that I can do justice to this, to this topic. So uh, Lilith in Scorpio, she is like the serpent. She, uh, when you are in the aura of a Lilith and Scorpio woman, you will feel like you can trust her. You will feel like you can tell her all your secrets. You will feel like you can open up to her. You will feel like she understands you like nobody else can understand you. And you just feel like uh, you can tell her all your secrets, even the darkest ones that you've never shared with anyone ever in your whole life. But you feel you can tell the little Scorpio woman all these secrets. And that's because her energy field is to do with the root chakra. So she is basically asking you to confide in her and tell her, all your own deepest insecurities and darkest secrets and everything that you feel that you have not been able to share with anyone else. And a lot of people confuse intimacy with just physical intimacy, but actually real intimacy is being able to share your dark, darker secrets with somebody else. And, you know, that's what Lilith and Scorpio understands that when somebody is able to confide in her to such an extent, where they're telling her their deepest, darkest secrets, stuff that they have never shared with anyone else ever before in their life. Uh, this is a huge vulnerability. So it's kind of like the serpent that says, trust in me, trust in me, you know, and I will make everything good. You can trust in me. That's the kind of vibe that a little Scorpio gives off. And so when you trust in her, what she does with this vulnerability, what she does with this power is entirely up to her. The responsible Lilith and Scorpio, the one who has worked on their own shadow side and transcended and knows how to heal, is going to take this vulnerability from the other person and is going to help them heal, is going to help them 
realize their own traumas, realize their own uh, issues, their demons, their dark side, and help them heal through this and reach the light. But a little in Scorpio who is unevolved, who hasn't faced up to her own demons, who has only known abuse all her life, who has not healed from this abuse, who is bitter, who is violent, who is hateful towards men and towards everybody who did this to her, she is going to take this vulnerability from this other person and she's going to use it to her advantage. She's going to prey on it. So she is going to uh, create situations that make this person feel more vulnerable. Now that she knows this person's buttons and how to press it and how to make him feel more insecure or make him more vulnerable, she can really prey on his weakness. She can really do damage to him. So it's about how Lilith and Scorpio uses this energy. You know, there are dark, there is dark and light and we need both to survive. I don't think that there is anything good or bad in this world. Each is what it is, you know. You need both to survive. You need both to live. One cannot exist with the, without the other. That's what occult is. So, um, Lilith and Scorpio really needs to do the work on themselves before they can use their power to get into a relationship or be psychically attached to somebody else. It's very easy for Lilith and Scorpio to get into a relationship. They don't have to try very hard because of this aura that they have. People do get attracted to them. But how they use this energy is completely dependent on whether they've worked on their own past traumas, whether they have healed themselves. Only if they've healed themselves can they really do justice to this power. Scorpio power is all about the sorcerer, you know, the healer. What is a sorcerer? Sorcerer is the magician in the tarot card, in the tarot series. Somebody who who is an alchemist, who can take something and transform it, transcend it into something else. That's what occult is. That's what Lilith and Scorpio is. Being able to take your dark side and manifest it into something else that is so supremely powerful that um, it just brings healing to people around them. So it's kind of like being through the fires of hell yourself and then coming out and then helping other people go through their own hell and helping them heal. This is kind of what I'm trying to do in through my astrology as well, through my needle chart readings. So if you're struggling in your life, you know, if you have some relationship issues or if you want to succeed in your career, maybe you're in a career path and you, you hate the job, you want something that's better, but you don't know what your ideal path should be like. Or let's say you always keep having problems whenever you start something new in life or any kind of challenge, you know, I can analyze your chart. I can figure out where your challenges are and based on where your challenges are, I will, I will recommend, you know, things that you can do to start rectifying this, to start moving forward because a lot of things we don't realize how accurate our birth charts are. They really, really point to everything that we're supposed to be doing in this life. And when you have a map that's ready to guide you in this life, why not use it? Why do you want to run away from it? So get in touch with me if you'd like me to help you out and analyze. Uh, let me assure you my readings are not free. I do charge. So you can get in touch with me on Facebook at facebook.com slash or you can drop me an email at astroluck111 at gmail.com and uh, let me know if you're interested in a natal chart reading in a love relationship and you want a synastry chart reading done where you basically compare the charts of two people and uh, analyze where the relationship is headed. I can help you do that. I go down to a lot of detail, like whether the relationship is going to be harmonious in the future, what kind of issues may arise, uh, if this is a marriage or this is a committed relationship, is there a scope of having kids, uh, you know, uh, a lot of detail is what I provide in my readings. 
So if you want to get any of these things done, get in touch with me. And I also do tarot card readings. So uh, let me know if you'd like any of these services or astrology services. So thanks a lot for watching. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, do show this, uh, do show my channel some love and support. I really appreciate it. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you like my content, do subscribe to my channel. I post videos every week. So there'll be new videos coming up every week. And thanks a lot for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.